as we introduced weighted voting, we talked about the importance of power. The more weight you have in an election, the more power you have to influence the outcome. And we want a way to numerically measure how much power each player has in an election. So we're going to ask the question, how do we calculate power? And one of the most common ways to calculate power in weighted voting is what's called the Benzoff Power Index. And the way we calculate the Benzoff Power Index is first we will list all the winning coalitions. And in those coalitions, we will identify critical players. Once we've identified the critical players, we will count the number of times each player is critical. And then we'll convert that value to either a fraction, a decimal, or a percent by dividing by the total number of critical players that showed up in our result. And this is probably best seen by looking at an example. So let's do that. We're going to look at the weighted voting system where 36 is needed for quota. Player 1 is 20 votes. Player 2 is 17 votes. Player 3 is 16 votes. And player 4 has 3 votes. And our first goal then is to list all of the winning coalitions. So let's see if there's any two-player coalitions that are enough to win. If I have player 1 and player 2, that's going to give me 20 plus 17, which is 37 votes. That's definitely enough for a winning coalition. Also, if player 1 was combined with player 3, that would give me 20 plus 16 votes, which gives me 36. And that's enough to meet qu quota. Player 1 and player 4, those not enough. That's only 23 votes. If we look at players 2 and 3, 17 plus 16 is 33, which is not enough. And so all the other numbers are smaller. So those are the only two-player coalitions. When we look for three-player coalitions, you'll notice that player 1, player 2, and player 3 makes a quora, makes quota with 20 plus 17 plus 16. And that's going to be 33, 53 votes, way more than quota. Um, rather than player 4 missing, if player 3 was missing and we had player 1, player 2, player 4, that should be enough to meet quota as well. 20 plus 17 plus 3 is 40 votes, enough to meet quota. We can also meet quota if player 2 is missing. With player 1, player 3, and player 4 as a trio, that's a winning coalition with 20 plus 16 plus 3, which would give us 39 votes, more than quota. In fact, we don't need player 1 either. If we had player 2, player 3, player 4, that would be 17 plus 16 plus 3, which gives us exactly 36 votes, again, meeting quota. And of course, if everyone votes together, player 1, player 2, 
player 3 and player 4, we're going to meet quota. That's 20 plus 17 plus 16 plus 3, which gives us 56, way more than quota. So we've identified all the winning coalitions. And now we're going to see which ones are critical. Player in this first winning coalition, player 1 is critical, but with, because without player 1, player 2 cannot meet quota by herself. But then again, player 2 is also critical because player 1 can't reach quota by himself. So both of them are critical in this case. Similarly, in the second one, if player 1 was removed, player 3 would not make quota by herself. So we'll call player 1 critical. Player 3 also, with 16 votes, is not enough to meet quota alone. So player 3 is critical. In the next coalition, if we have player 1 removed, we would just have players 2 and players 3, which would be 17 plus 16, 33. That's not enough to meet quota, so player 1 is critical. But notice if player 2 was removed, we would have 20 plus 16, which is 36. We can meet quota without player 2, so player 2 is not really needed in this coalition. Similarly, with player 3 removed, we would just have players 1 and 2. That's 37. And we do meet quota without player 3, so player 3 is not critical either. Continuing down, player 1 in the next coalition with just 17 and 3 is only 20. We cannot meet quota without player 1, so player 1 is critical. If player 2 was removed, we would only have 20 and 3, which is 23, which is not enough to meet quota. So player 2 is also critical in this case. If player 4 was removed, though, 1 and 3 can meet quota by themselves with 37 votes. And so player 4 is not critical in this winning coalition. With 1, 3, and 4, if we remove player 1, leaving behind just the 3 and 4, 16 plus 3 is only 19 votes. Player 1 is critical. If player 3 was removed, we would just have players 1 and 4. That's only 23 votes, short of the 36 needed for quota. So player 3 is critical. But if player 4 was removed, leaving just 1 and 3, we do get the 36 votes required for quota. In this case, player 1 is not critical to the coalition. All right, next one. If player 2 was removed, we would have 16 plus 3, only 19 votes. That's not enough for quota, so player 2 is critical. If player 3 was removed, we only have 17 and 3. That's only 20 votes, short of the 36 for quota which means player 3 is critical. If player 4 was removed, we'd only have 33 votes. Player 4 is critical in this coalition. So in this coalition, if any of the three were missing, we would not have quota. With this last coalition, when we remove player 1, that leaves 2, 3, and 4. Adding that together gives us 36 votes, which means player 1 is not critical in this case. If we removed player 2, we would have 20 plus 16 plus 3, which is 39, which meets quota. So player 2 is not critical. If player 3 was removed, we'd have 20 plus 17 plus 3, which is 40 which meets quota, so player 3 is not needed, not critical. And player 4 removed would leave us with 20 plus 17 plus 16, which is plenty to meet quota, so player 4 is not needed either. So we've now identified all of the critical players in all of the winning coalitions. Our next step is to count the number of times each player is critical. And so we'll make a list for player 1, 
player two, player three, and player four. And we see player one is critical one, two, three, four, five times. Player one was critical. Player two was critical one, two, three times. Player three was critical one, two, three times. And player four was critical just one time. Our final step then is to convert those into either a fraction, decimal, or percent by dividing by the total. And when I say total, I mean the total number of critical players. So if we say 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 1, you'll notice that gives us 12 for a total. So we'll do 5 divided by 12, 3 divided by 12, 3 divided by 12, and 1 divided by 12 to get the proportion of times each player is critical, the Banzhoff power distribution. So player one's critical 5 twelfths of the time, which is about 42%. Player three's critical 3 twelfths of the time, which is about 25%. Player three's critical 3 twelfths of the time, which is also about 25%. And player four's critical 1 twelfth of the time, which is about 8%. And so this becomes the Banzhoff power distribution. 42% of the time, player 1 is needed to make quota. That gives you a measure of player 1's power. Player 2's power is down to 25%, only needed in 25% of winning coalitions. Player 3, the same. And player 4 has the least power only needed in 8% of winning coalitions. So that's how we can calculate power. It's time for you to practice calculating your own Banzhoff power indexes on some homework problems. And in the next video, we'll look at a second way that power can be calculated based on when people join a winning coalition. But we'll save that for our next video.